Hey, hey you, yes you, see all these wonderful people right here? They are my Patreons. With the support I get from them, I can afford to do my passion as a career and bring you guys weekly videos. Want to join them? For just $1 a month, you can get videos 24 hours before anyone else. And for even higher tiers, you can get Polaroids, letters, and mystery boxes from me to you. And even fursuit parts, not to mention my eternal thanks. So what are you waiting for? Become a Patreon today via the link in the description. Thanks again, enjoy the video. One of the most frequent questions I get about fursuit making is, Sky, how do I do intricate details in my markings? Like this, for example. This is a tail I'm currently making for Lily Moon Suits as a trade. Go check out their stuff, their stuff is awesome. And I'm gonna be showing you guys today how I do it. However, as with the answers to most fursuit making questions, the answer is simpler than you think. I've done one side of this tail, so I'm gonna use this piece as an example piece, and we're gonna do the other side. I've already recorded the bit where I've drawn out the pattern and cut out the fur, so I'll show you guys that now just to give you a quick rundown. So essentially I'm starting out with two big bits of butcher's paper. If you're making big tails or any tails, I can't recommend it any higher. And I'm really just tracing out my pattern. And make sure all your markings are very accurate, especially for detailed markings like we're doing here. And be sure to make sure they're a decent size because it will kind of distort when you fur it. We will be shaving this down slightly once I've finished the tail, but for now, we're just gonna make sure all these markings are absolutely perfect. And once they're done and we are happy with them, we're just gonna cut them out. Cut out each individual piece so it's separated along the lines of where you've drawn your pattern. Okay. So now I've turned my pattern into essentially confetti. I'm not even done yet. I haven't even like gotten to the fin bits yet. Then simply cut out from your fur. These are gonna be a bit of complicated shapes, so take your time and give yourself a little bit of seam allowance. Not much, especially since we'll be hand sewing this. So maybe like one to two millimeters, depending on your level of comfort with your hand sewing. Take a special note of the fur direction. As these pieces can get a bit complicated, you may have to break up some bits to keep that fur direction if you don't wanna be heat treating it at the end and we're gonna get into the beefy stuff, which is this. Now, for to do this kind of stuff, all you're gonna need is your fur and a needle and thread. I recommend using some kind of upholstery thread, however, I prefer using thinner thread for these kinds of bits. I'm just using standard Gutterman thread for this little bit of the project. So we're gonna get straight on into it. We've got our, this is opposite side of this piece. So we're gonna sew together the other sides. When you cut out your fur, you're gonna essentially have fur confetti. It's gonna be a bit messy. This is our main black piece, and we're gonna have four yellow pieces to put in here. The main one is going to be this piece here. So that is gonna be our little curly, curly, curly. And if you've done your pattern properly, you'll notice it's essentially is gonna fit into the hole we've cut. I've got a fairly sizable bit of yellow thread to match my yellow fabric. You can use black as well. Pick whichever colour suits you best. I prefer to use the thread of the shortest fur. And then I've tied a knot at the end so it's doubled over. And essentially what we're going to do is I usually pick a starting point. So I won't necessarily start from the bottom of it. You can if you're confident, but I like to be on the side of caution. With these kinds of ones, it's really easy to have it misalign and not quite um, sew in as nicely as we'd like. So on the main piece, I like to trim back all this white um, sketch marks and they will just help it fit a little bit nicer, I've found, and it bows a bit less. If you add a, if you add too much fabric when you're cutting this out, or I mean sewing this, you will find that it will just bow and look like a big bubble of fur. It doesn't look very nice at all. So I've trimmed that back a little bit now we're going to start our sewing. Essentially, I want to make, I usually find a key interest point of the design to start from, where you absolutely want that seam to meet that seam, if that makes sense, because sometimes they don't, and that's just a lot to do with how it's cut. I'm going to hold the two pattern pieces together. They line up, and I'm going to start with my needle. I'm going to go in, like so. I'm going to go to the end of the thread. And then I'm gonna get my needle and I'm gonna stick it through the loop at the end like that. We're essentially creating a slip knot. So that's gonna be our starting stitch. And then we're just gonna work our way around. So I'm gonna 
start stitching along here all the way down so it meets that piece there. Essentially you're just going to be blanket stitching these two together. Now the smaller stitches you use the cleaner your result is going to be. It can be really tempting to do huge stitches, trust me I know I'm not lazy, um, but you really need to control yourself and take your time. And essentially all we're going to be doing is we're going to be repeating this stitch all the way along, focus please, all the way along until we meet this point here. Okay, so that seam is done. As you can see, I've stitched all the way along here. Now I have one of two decisions. I can either start working back along the same stripe to bring it up to here, or I can grab my other curl and start it this way. If you're doing stripes, you just start from the end. I just tend to use points as good reference points of starting. Um, so I think I'm gonna start from the next point in the next little curl, and I'm going to work my way around here. If, for example, you're doing a shape, say like it's a D shape, like this, this a semicircle, you can start with one of the little points. If it's just a circle, just align your fur direction and go nuts, sew along it. The reason why I'm blabbing on so much about tensions is if you pull your fabric too much or you tension your seams wrong, it can make things like tails and stuff twist or add bubbles into your fur where you don't want them to be. So we're gonna do it in little bits to make sure that everything is good. And once again, just working with the blanket stitch. If you want a more in detailed tutorial on how to do a blanket stitch, I do have a sewing tutorial that I made several years ago. So be sure to check that out in the little eye. Okay, now we're working on the last seam. So as you can see, this side pretty much completely done but this is a bit that goes straight through the middle of this pattern piece. So we're gonna need to bring the remainder of the fabric around, meet it there. So I'm just gonna start, I'm probably gonna start from this end because this is where it needs to meet up. And I'm just gonna work my way around all the way here with my blanket stitch. Nothing too complicated. Literally all that I say when people ask, how do you do markings? Is you cut a hole for the marking, you cut a marking and you put the marking in the hole. And when you see me do some spots, you'll understand why I say that. So let's get that done. Alrighty, so we've done our main marking. So as you can see, it's direct opposite because it's going on the other side. But you can see we've mimicked our previous piece. So you can see how it's been stitched. And now notice how on the other side, it doesn't quite look the same as our back piece. It's a lot thinner. Now, I find a lot of the time you can usually give this a brush and it tends to look loads nicer. But if you really want, you can go in with some scissors and you can trim off some of the longer bits of fur. I just push it up like that, run my scissors along there and it should do that. But I'm gonna actually give it a light shave before I sew it together. So there's that. Now we've got to add the dots because as you can see, this has four little tiny dots around it like so. You can see, this is how I did the spots on Sky by the way, everybody was asking, it's the same deal. So as you can see, focuses really, really tiny, not much bigger than my fingernail, still got the fur pile on it. So this is navel list number one, so I put it as the top. So essentially, I'm gonna take note of the fur direction, which is going down, so that way. The fur direction is going down, I'm gonna position it into the hole, so you can see there's my finger going through it. I'm just gonna put it in there, and push it through the hole and just kind of pull the pile back like that. And now it's in position and you can just start sewing. Same deal as before, nothing different. It doesn't matter where you start as long as you make sure that the rotation of the piece is still the same way. Even if it isn't and the fur is going a funky way, you can usually brush it and it's barely noticeable or you can use heat to fix it. So same deal, just kind of stick the needle through both layers and start blanket stitching it around. Okay, so we've done all our three spotties and as you can see there's them on the other side and we want to give them a brush. Brushy, 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 brushy. And there we go. Again, I'm going to give this a shave and the shorter the fur, the more clearer the markings, clear and crisp. But if you still want that fluffy look, then you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of marking detail there. But there you go. Okay, and that really concludes how you do detailed markings. You cut a hole in the shape of the marking, well, 
you do this when you pattern it, but you put the pattern in the hole and you sew it closed. A lot of making questions are quite simple to answer. Um, I think maybe I'll turn this into a series. Maybe I'll call it Maker's Minis, little mini tutorials. I think that sounds really cute. Maker's Minis, I like that. So if you wanna see another Maker's Minis, let me know what you'd like to know down below. The most interesting comments that I find at least will probably be made into a video because I love when people ask really interesting questions that I can go, oh, took me a while to figure this out, but guess what? So if you're keen to see another mini tutorial, please leave your ideas for that down below and ask me all your amazing questions can't wait to hear back from you guys and I'll see you guys next week. So bye.